the Lord be with you. Welcome to Faith Lutheran Church. It's the 14th Sunday after Pentecost. Welcome to all of you, too, who are watching the video. This morning, as you can see from the screen, is all about the heart. The heart of the problem, the heart of the ongoing difficulties, and the heart of the ultimate solution for all those ailments. Take care. Have heart is what we'll be thinking about this morning. We do have some birthdays and one anniversary that are coming up this week. On the 31st of August, Vina Heise is having a birthday. And on September the 3rd, Walter Heise is having a birthday. Are either of them here? Okay. Well, we're going to, when you get a chance, please call them this week to wish them a happy anniversary. And also, I discovered last week that we have a, a, an anniversary today. Ken and Joyce Thurston are celebrating an anniversary. Can you wave? Okay, do you want to stand and give a speech about... No, I'm just kidding. All right, um, it's good that we could all be here and that you could be here. Uh, and for us, the opportunity to praise God for the blessings he's given to us in our lives and to worship together is, is a very good thing. Let's stand and take a moment to greet each other. Please wave to the people on the, the video and wish everyone a good Sunday. All right, let's join together and sing our opening hymn. of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The congregation may be seated. This is the day the Lord has made. From the rising of the sun to its setting. Better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Sanctify us in your truth. From the rising of the sun to its setting. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. My friends in Christ, we are God's people. Through his word, he has given us wisdom and understanding to follow his ways. Yet there are times when we have chosen foolishness over wisdom, willful ignorance instead of understanding. Still even now, our Heavenly Father invites us to come to him and ask for forgiveness.
Heavenly Father, we have ignored your word. <coughs> Forgive us, create in us new hearts. so that we may follow where my friends in Christ almighty God in his infinite wisdom and grace sent his son Jesus Christ to die and rise for our sins because of Jesus the joy of salvation is restored and no iniquity can remain in dominion over us Therefore, as a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We are forgiven in Christ. We have been cleansed of our sin. Amen. Please stand as we sing the hymn of praise. may be seated as we hear God's word. The Old Testament reading for this Sunday is from Deuteronomy. Now, o Israel, listen to the statutes and the just decrees that I am teaching you, and do them, that you may live and go in and take possession of the land that the Lord, the God of your fathers, is giving you. You shall not add to the word that I command you, nor take from it, that you may keep the commandments of the Lord your God that I command you. Keep them and do them, for that will be your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the peoples, 
who when they hear all these statutes will say, surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. For what great nation is there that has a God so near to it as the Lord our God is to us? Whenever we call upon him. And what a great nation is there that has statutes and just decrees so righteous that all this law and I set before you today. Only take care and keep your soul diligently, lest you forget the things that your eyes have seen, and lest they depart from your heart all the days of your life. Make them known to your children and to your children's children. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle lesson for this Sunday is from Ephesians chapter 6. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand firm. Stand, therefore, having fastened on the belt of truth, and having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and as shoes for your feet, having put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace in all circumstances, take up the shield of faith, with which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying at all times and in the Spirit with all prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert with all perseverance, making supplication for all the saints and also for me, that words may be given to, the, to me in opening my mouth boldly to proclaim the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains, that I might declare it boldly as I ought to speak. This is the word of the Lord. Please stand for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the seventh chapter. Jesus called the people to him again and said to them, Hear me, all of you, and understand. There is nothing outside a person that by going into him can defile him. But the things that come out of a person are what defile him. And when he had entered the house and left the people, his disciples asked him about the parable. And he said to them, Then are you also without understanding? Do you not see that whatever goes into a person from outside cannot defile him, since it enters not his heart but his stomach, and is expelled? Thus he declared all foods clean. And he said, What comes out of a person is what defiles him. For from within... Out of the heart of man come evil thoughts, sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, coveting, wickedness, deceit, sensuality, envy, slander, pride, foolishness. All these evil things come from within, and they defile a person. This is the gospel of the Lord. The congregation may be seated. Forever, O Lord, your word is firmly set in the heavens. Blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. We confess our Christian faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit,
our Father, who art in heaven, My friends, in Christ, the text this morning is the gospel that you heard a moment ago. It's a little bit of a different worship service. This is the service of prayer and preaching. And so that's why things are a little bit what we would think of as just a bit in a different order. So let's think about this gospel. Jesus talks about the heart and all the things that go into the body and all the things that come out of the body. And it's, again, like everything else in the kingdom, it's all the opposite of what you think. In fact, it seems to go against all common sense, doesn't it? It seems to be completely backward from the way we normally think about these things. We know what makes us messed up, what confuses us, what really makes us dirty comes from outside of us. Isn't that the way it is? Think about it. The dust, the filth, the grunge that makes us dirty comes from the outside in, not from the inside out, right? Air pollution, for example, eats away at our insides. All that dirt and grunge and grime clings to us. And so we take showers and baths, to rid ourselves of the mess that sticks to us from the outside. Let me go on. You put drugs into your body, and you could get addicted. You hang out with gang members, and you become one because you hung with the wrong crowd. It could happen. From our perspective, it's all about being made messy from the outside in. And then Jesus comes along and turns all that understanding upside down. Not quite the way we think it should be. We think that all things spiritually related ought to work like every other part of our lives. We want spiritual purity And we want to work hard at getting it to keep ourselves pure and clean, don't we? If we just follow a checklist, you know, five tips to better tax savings or to a better retirement fund, all we need to do is study the right books, watch only the proper movies, hang out with the right groups of people, And above all, stay away from all those worldly things that could pollute us. You know, back in the Old Testament, in the book of Leviticus, the quote-unquote religious people in Israel took the wrong approach to all those laws about all that purity that's listed there. Not a hard mistake to make. So many laws about what was clean and unclean about so many, many aspects of life. What one ate, what one touched. For example, certain animals were considered to be unclean. You know this, like pork, shrimp, lobster. Just touching any one of those things would make you unclean. And there were so many other ways too. So it wasn't hard to connect the dots to think that it was what entered your body that made you unclean. Eat unclean food, you become unclean. Touch unclean things, you become unclean. Ritual and spiritual purity get mixed up pretty easily. And that's where the people went wrong. Being ritually clean was what set Israel apart from other nations. They were a set-apart nation. 
There was a special regimen, complete with all sorts of rules and regulations that held sway over every part of life, reminding them who they were and whose they were. They were people chosen and then set apart for a purpose. That purpose was to bring Jesus into the world in the fullness of time. However, not one procedure of any of those could make their hearts pure or the person pure, spiritually speaking. In fact, quite the opposite. All those Old Testament rules did was to show how hard it was to be completely pure. And really, if you could hardly stay ceremonially pure, how were you supposed to be pure of spirit? As always, Jesus teaches and uses every one of these questions to teach and share about the kingdom of God. And he shows again that it is the opposite of the world what, what the world wants it to be. He says a person becomes spiritually unclean from the inside out, not the other way around, not from the outside in. It's what comes out of you that defiles you, not what goes into you. You see how different that is from the way things were done back then and so very opposite of what we think today. Once again, the disciples don't quite understand and sometimes neither do we. So they come to Jesus and they ask the same question you would ask. Away from the crowd in the house, by the way, they ask Jesus about it and he is a bit exasperated with them. Food isn't what makes you unclean. It goes in, it gets digested, it goes out. It never touches your heart unless you get some heartburn. And so the Lord of all asserts that all foods are unclean. He can do that. He's the Lord. He does it. Why? because he needs to. That peculiarity between being clean and unclean of Israelite and Gentile, non-Israelite, was only done to prepare the way for Jesus coming as the anointed and chosen one of Israel, savior of the world. Jesus makes the unclean clean. Jesus convicts all of our hearts and points the finger of his law toward them as the offender. So, as you can see, it's not the world that makes us dirty, unclean as it is. In other words, that finger that points at the world, attributing it as the place of all that is not clean, is pointing in the completely wrong direction. It should be pointing back at us, our hearts, because that's where sin comes from. Sin comes out of the heart. Here's a list of the waste product. Evil thoughts, sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, coveting, wickedness, deceit, sensuality, envy, slander, pride, foolishness. All of it comes from the heart that has become unhinged from God. The heart that is soaked in sin. The heart that has placed itself on the altar to be worshipped by the self. Out of our own hearts come all the things we loathe about the world. Murder, adultery, deceits. It all starts right there in the heart. 
Now do you understand why when people say, just do what your heart tells you, that they're doing exactly that and all those things? So, what's the answer? The answer is this. We need new hearts. We need a heart transplant. Here's how the prophet Ezekiel said it. I will give you a new heart and a new spirit I will put within you. And I will remove the heart of stone from your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. That's God's answer. The only problem is that we can't just do a rehab or a refurbishment of these hardened, sinful stone hearts we have. As we hear, every time there's a baptism, we are conceived and born this way. We have unclean hearts from the beginning that lead to unclean thoughts, words, and deeds. This is a critical part of the Christian faith that we need to understand and stick with what the scriptures say. We are not sinners because we sin. Say what? We are not sinners because we sin. Sin because we are sinners. It comes where? From our hearts. And so the answer and solution isn't in our hearts. It's in the heart of God. In his undeserved kindness and mercy to us from God in Christ. You see the good news here? God alone can touch the heart. God alone shapes the will of us, his rebellious people. God alone takes what is unwilling and makes it willing. A complete change of hearts. A heart transplant. Hearts that are brand new. Stone hearts that are replaced by hearts of flesh. Beating hearts, pulsing to the beat of God's word and his spirit. Hearts made alive from dead ones. All beating with faith and trust in God and in fervent love for neighbor. My friends in Christ, the good news is God desires this for every one of you. He gives it to you. But remember, it's not really a transplant per se. If it were, we would be entirely now sinless because the starting place of sin would be gone. Rather, God does a side-by-side kind of thing. He puts a new heart right there beside the old one. You could say it this way, sinner and saint. Well, Luther would say it that way. Together they beat during this life the old Adam and Eve heart and the new heart of Jesus. It's called this life of faith. It's the life we have now as we also have and wait for the resurrected life. We're in a bit of a paradox right now as we live this life in push and pull between the old and new, between life and death, and between saint and sinner. So, how then do we live? He says to us, trust me. He says to us, trust me. I am your God, you are my people. I have rescued you from your sins in the death of my son Jesus. I have washed you. I've washed you clean, baptized you with my word, claimed you as my own. Don't bother giving me your heart. In its place, I will give you my heart, the heart of Jesus, whose heart is pulsing to my will. It's not what goes in that makes us unclean. 
Instead, it's who goes in that makes us clean. The purity of the spirit does not come from inside, but from outside of ourselves. The waters of our baptism outside of us poured onto us. Words of forgiveness spoken from outside of us right directly into our ears. And the body and blood of Jesus fed to us in our mouths from outside of us. My friends in Christ, the great good news of the gospel is that God makes the unclean clean. God alone can do it. In fact, God alone has done it. And he does it for you here today, again, in your hearing. Amen. And now the peace of God that passes all understanding will guard and keep your hearts and minds in him forever. Amen. Let's sing about this wonderful grace in the hymn, By Grace I'm Saved. Please stand.
please be seated. During our prayers this uh, morning, we are going to continue to pray for Catherine Schmidt. I did have a chance to see her this past week. Um, she's moved from the intensive care unit to an observation unit, um, is breathing with a, a tracheotomy, um, and, uh, and continues to be um, in a state where I had a chance to pray with her and spend some time reading scripture to her. Um, and so we want to continue to ask God to be with her and her mother, Aileen, and her sisters, Karen and Lynn, as they attend to her. Let us pray. Let us pray for the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Almighty God, we ask you to be near us with your word and spirit. Guide and lead us that we may not stray from the way of your commandments, nor forget the wonderful blessings that you have given to us. Direct us always with your word of truth. Lord, in your mercy, by your Holy Spirit, protect us this day from the assaults of the devil. Equip us with the full armor of God that we may be clothed in truth, righteousness, peace, faith, and salvation, bearing the sword of the Spirit, which is your word. Keep us all in safety and security from the forces of the evil one. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, preserve us from all that would defile us in heart and soul. Keep us from all evil thoughts, immorality, theft, murder, adultery, coveting, wickedness, deceit, sensuality, envy, slander, pride, and foolishness. Create in us a pure heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within us, that we, be, we would be holy as you are holy. Lord, in your mercy, God of all knowledge and wisdom, grant us to know you and your love. Bless pastors and teachers, parents and grandparents, and all who teach the faith, that the gospel may continue to spread throughout the world. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, you are the strength of the weak and the refuge of the powerless. Be with your people who are struggling with doubt and temptation. Grant assurance to the doubtful and deliverance to those tempted by this world. Give your power, grace, and love to those who need it. Lord, in your mercy. Lord of life, bring health and healing to your people. We pray for everyone in need of your mercy today, including your servants, Catherine Schmidt and Elvin Kitts. Strengthen them with your word of grace, that they would look to you for comfort in the midst of suffering and pain. Lord, in your mercy, into your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's take a moment now to listen to Eunice as she plays the musical offertory.
Let's stand as we pray. Oh God, the source of all that is just and good, nourish in us every virtue and bring to completion every good intent that we may grow in grace and bring forth the fruit of good works. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. Blessed Lord, you have caused all the Holy Scriptures to be written for our learning. Grant that we may so hear them, read, mark, learn, and take them to heart, that by the patience and comfort of your Holy Word, we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We join together in saying Luther's morning prayer. I... Let us bless the Lord. Receive now the benediction of the Lord. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve us. Amen. We join together in our closing hymn. Please be seated. So just several announcements I want to bring to your attention. Um, there's more information in the bulletin about um, the services in August, although today is the last Sunday in August. And um, so, so we're, the board of directors is meeting tomorrow to make some plans for upcoming worship services and protocols and procedures. So, also, I want to bring to your attention, um, if you look up in the balcony, you see Chase doing the sound today, Donna, who does sound a lot, Nathan, wave Nathan, and Dennis is up at the front, Dennis has done sound, the Anwilers have done sound, the Klebaums have done sound, uh, and PowerPoint, and what we want to do is 
increase the number of people that are able to do all those things. Uh, and so we want to have some training sessions. The bulletin notes that, and um, we'll ask for you to be thinking about coming in September and October for some training sessions um, that are uh, going to be had, are going to be uh, happening. So let me just, uh, there's also a presentation from Lutheran Church Canada Communications Director uh, about mental health, and that's in the bulletin as well. Please note that there's a very strong possibility that we're going to be resuming our seniors' luncheons on the 16th of September at 12 noon, and more information and confirmation of all of that will be provided shortly. So I wanted to also bring to your attention that in the bulletin there's a note that asks uh, or it welcomes you if you're visiting with us. And I want to make it abundantly clear that if you're visiting with us and you'd like more information about the church or about um, what we do here at the church, you can, if you would like, set up an appointment and I'll come visit you. We can meet at the church, we can meet over the phone, whatever you're comfortable with so that I can get to know you a bit better and vice versa and maybe answer any questions that you might have. Now from time to time, um, we do introduce people who are visiting. Dennis would like to do so. You've secured permission to do so? Okay. It's always important to do that before we just randomly introduce people. But in the, uh, in the narthex earlier, I got to meet a wonderful couple who are worshiping with us today, Al and Sylvia Parker. And they're seated just behind Cesar and in front of John Knox. So welcome. Uh, we're glad you could be with us today. And uh, just so you know, we, we file out through the side door and people visit in the parking lot. So uh, when you're in the parking lot, uh, have a chance to get to meet uh, Al and Sylvia. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. I also wanted to um, express my appreciation uh, for Eunice's musical offertory this morning. Uh, when I was listening to it, I realized whenever my piano teacher made me do scales, I always wondered why she made me do all those crazy scales. And then I listened to this piece this morning and realized that's why. They were filled with... So thank you again. That was... That was very fine. Thank you. All right. Who are we following this, this morning? Please follow Lorraine's direction as you leave. Go in peace. <laughs>